Hey, what's up? This is Adam with Aerial Motion Photography and I'm back at it again with another drone tutorial. In this video, I want to show you how to film a car or truck with a drone, how to get cinematic footage, how to be able to track the drone, make everything look really steady and clean, and um, also at the very end, how to upload a video over one minute to Instagram. Because if you didn't post on Instagram, did it really happen? All right, let's get started. So the first thing that I want to start about this video is my friend, he just got his brand new truck, got it built exactly how he wanted it, his dream truck, and he wanted to film himself driving on the beach. So he called me with about 45 minutes, maybe an hour of heads up. He's like, first thing, we'll get something to eat, and then after we eat, um, let's go film it with the drone. So we didn't have very much time planning it. And basically what I had to do was just kind of go on the fly. And um, I just wanted to explain to you kind of my thought process and what I did to make this video turn out as well as it did. The first thing that I did is I wanted to get different shots. So you want to be able to plan things out. At least in your head, there's a few things you can just run through. So I knew um, since the drone has more of like a wide angle lens, I knew I wanted to get a variety. So something that's kind of pulled back, overhead, close up, and then um, with movements, you also want to get a lot of movement. So one of my favorite things to do with anything that has to do with boats, cars, trucks, it's the orbit. It really shows off the whole vehicle. And um, if you can get it and it looks really smooth, it looks like something you'd see on TV in a commercial or on the movies. When creating a video, you wanna have three parts. You want the beginning, the middle, and the end. So in the beginning of the video, you wanna set the scene. So you can see right here, I have the sunset off to the left. So I'm setting the scene. The sun's going down. You can see the sun rays reflecting off the windows of the houses. I'm starting with a three quarter shot. One of the things that I think is the most impressive part about his truck is the front end and just how like imposing and aggressive it looks. So that's why I'm starting out with the drone in front. I'm just in normal mode. I'm not in tripod mode. I'm not in any of the quick shot modes. Mode free hand, following the truck as he goes down to the water. He's making his turn. As I'm flying, now I'm starting to put it into the active track mode and I'm gonna select trace. And what I wanna do is I wanna orbit around the truck. If you want to learn more about the active track modes, click on this video I made up here and I go in depth and basically explain all the steps and how to do it. Okay, let's get back to this video. So I'm orbiting around the truck and then now I put it into clockwise mode. So I'm getting a whole different angle. Since the sun's going to be at my back, it's really lighting up the truck and you can just see the details a lot better. As soon as I'm rotating around, I always like to have angles. So I kind of like to have everything go either to a 90 or 180 degree angle. So I'm coming around, I wait till it gets, you know, right behind the truck and then that's where I make my next cut. Pro tip would be if you want to take your videos to the next level, it's to match the soundtrack with the video. So one way that you can do this is you can look at the audio and you can look at the spikes of the audio when you're doing your editing. And when you see a spike, if you want to have your video edited with the beats, that's when you can make your cut and to go on to the next part of the video. Don't touch my truck. So you can see the truck's driving away and I use the Mavic Zoom. And what I love about this drone is just the zoom part of it. I'm still able to keep it in frame and about the same size while you still see movement at the same time. One thing that you'll notice when filming cars is no matter what speed you're filming, when you watch it over on your computer, it always looks like the car was going a lot slower than it really was. So a tip that I have is I always like to speed the footage up. So right here about 200% and that just looks like the regular speed that the truck was actually going. The only way that the viewer could really tell that the footage has been sped up is if they look at the waves and just kind of how they're going faster than they normally would. And now with the truck coming at me, this is where I get the shot and I'm flying backwards while the truck's coming at me. Whenever you're filming into the sun, your subject's going to lose a lot of detail. But in this case, I'm going to use it to my advantage. So you want to have a wide variety of shots. You want to have some close up, some far away shots, all different angles. That makes your story and your, your video so much more appealing. So in this part of the video is where I want to be more zoomed in. And since I'm filming into the sun, 
the detail's lost anyways, so I can crop to a tighter shot without the viewer noticing how the quality and the detail has gone down. This is a part of the video I really like because you can just really see the spray and him just driving through the water and how big that truck really is. I switch to a side profile shot and now I bring back the motion and the movement and now I'm flying the drone and starting to follow the truck again. Coming up behind the truck, freehand, orbiting around. And now I cut to film the truck from the other direction. And I think this is a cool shot. You see the sunset, you see a surfer walking with his board, and then him driving the truck just slowly up the beach. Here he is making the turn. This is with the lighting, with the sun at your back. Detail and best quality. Letting the truck drive in front of me as he's driving back up the berm to his house. Now I approach the truck and I fly over. And then here I switch into a dolly zoom and that's also known as the vertigo effect. And basically what the drone is doing is it's zooming in at the same time it's pulling away and it's making this effect where the background's changing but the size of the object in the foreground is staying the same. And if you want to learn how to do a dolly zoom, you can click this video I made up here and I go in depth about doing that. And it's in the quick shot modes and it's something that's actually really simple to do, but it can take your videos and your storytelling to the next level and it can be a good transition piece as well. When doing a dolly zoom, I like to have more of a line of sight looking at my drone rather than looking at the screen. And that's because the object stays the same size. So you might get the appearance that the drone's staying put, but it's really flying backwards. So just a tip that I have is just to make sure everything's clear behind the drone. In this case, I got really close to the drone flying backwards, really close to the houses behind me. So here I am following the truck and he starts to turn to the left and I'm in freehand mode. And what I'm doing is I'm keeping the truck in the center, but I'm doing a freehand turn around and I just wanna get the side of the truck and to have the truck facing straight at the drone. So when finishing this video, I'm having the truck exiting the beach and that's the final step of the storytelling process. So we started with the beginning, which was the truck at his house. Then the middle was all the action of him driving back and forth. And then now this is the ending with the truck leaving. And this is the sequence that you want to tell a story. But one thing that's just magical about the editing process is you can put things in any order that you want. So you can keep the continuity of the video, which means in the right sequence, even though when you filmed it, it might not have happened in that order. As I'm filming, I'm flying behind the truck and it looks like I'm gonna overtake it. But what I do is I pan down and I'm still matching the horizontal speed of the truck but I fly up vertically and that's what gives this really cool bird's eye view shot and that can add just to the cinematic effect of your videos and if you want to learn more cinematic shots like these click on this video up here and I go over different cinematic shots and I explain them and some of them are pretty easy to do and the bonus tip that I said I would give out at the end of this video was how to upload videos that are over a minute to Instagram and you want to do this to your IGTV and it's really easy you can do it from your phone just like if you're uploading a video or a photo or you can do it from your computer. And one thing that's cool about doing it from your computer is you can, you don't have to transfer that file to your phone. So sometimes your videos, especially if they're over one minute, the file's gonna be large and it's gonna be too large usually to text or to email. So what you're gonna have to do is airdrop it from your computer to your phone. But since you can do IGTV from your computer, it just makes it really easy and it's just drag and drop. And I encourage you to check out my Instagram page. It's at Aerial Motion Photography. And I upload here more regularly than I do on YouTube. So be sure to check that out. And that wraps up this video on how to film automobiles with your drone. If you found this video entertaining, educational, or a combination of those two, give it a big thumbs up. That means a lot to me. The more thumbs ups and likes videos get, they get ranked higher so more people can see them. And then that will help grow this channel. So I'd appreciate that a lot. If you like videos like these, consider subscribing and then check those notifications so you'll be notified when I upload my newest videos. As always, my name's Adam. Fly safe, take care, peace.